Now putting all the pieces uh, together, this is how your complete neural network uh, would look like. You take an image, you do the convolution, that is you cascade multiple con convent pool layers. And uh, finally, whatever feature map you get, you just expand it and convert it to a one dimensional vector. And uh, let's say if you are doing ImageNet uh, classification, where there are uh, thousand classes, you feed this as input to your fully connected layer and uh, fully connected and softmax layer. And finally, you will get uh, the properties for each of these image, uh, the relative property scores for human, car, dog, cat, etc. So this way you can do the classification for uh, all your uh, thousand uh, different classes using the con, fc and softmax. There is uh, just one last uh, detail here. Here we can see that the size of this vector is dropping from 9000 to almost a small array, 1000. And uh, just like the way you are uh, doing, you are doing the cascade of convent pool layers for a big image. Say in this case, you are taking the image that is of height 768 and width 1536. And instead of straight away reducing the size to just 3 by 6, what you are doing is in successive layers, you are cascading the convent pool layers and reducing it in a step by step process. Same thing can be done even in the fully connected layers. So for example, if your input array is, is of uh, length say 21, what you can do is, you can have 10 different filters in your first stage of the fully connected layer. So the output of your first stage of fully connected layer will be a array of size 10. To this output, you again add 4 more filters for example. In this case, again your output of uh, this stage of fully connected layer will be 4. And here you finally add two more filters and you will get an array of size 2. To this you apply softmax now. Softmax will be applied only once at the end of all fully connected layers. So now once you apply the softmax to these array values, here you can decide whether the uh, image was a horizontal line or a vertical one. Uh, in the same way you can even cascade the fully connected layers at the end of your network output and finally apply softmax to do the image classification. Here, instead of drastically dropping the array size from 9000 to 1000, what you are doing is you are reducing it step by step. That is, in the first fully connected layer output, your network had 4096 feature vector, and in the next step, you reduce it to 2048, and in the final step, reduce it to an array size of length 1000. These layers in between are called as hidden layers. Same thing can be seen here. Because from the outside, it looks like you gave this big array as input and you just got array of size 2 as output. But in fact, in between you have so many other layers, these layers are all hidden. This is the complete typical convolutional neural network. You have the major components or convolution layer, pooling layers and you cascade these things. You get a feature map that is having a depth of 512 and size is of 3 by 6. You expand this feature map into a single one dimensional vector and feed it to a cascade of fully connected layers and finally apply softmax. By putting all these components together, now you can do the image classification. And this is an example of AlexNet. This is the network that won the ImageNet competition in the year 2012. They took an input image of size 224 by 224 and the filter they used in the first layer was 11 by 11. The depth of the output was 96. The height and width of the feature map was 55 by 55. And in this layer, they used a 5 by 5 filter. And they got a output of 27 by 27. But in this case, the depth increased to 256. 384 and 13. 384 and 13. Here the filter size was 3 by 3. Even here it's 3 by 3. And finally, at the output of all the convolution pooling layers, you have a depth of 256 and the height and width of the feature maps is 13 by 13. And uh, these are the fully connected layers. Sometimes it's also called as dense layers. The first layer of fully connected was of size 4096. Even the second layer had the same size. And the final layer had the size of 1000. That's because the number of classes in your image net is 1000. And this is another uh, network that is very easy to understand called VGGNet. Here you again have the same sized uh, input. You can see 224 by 224 by 3 here. What does this uh, 3 indicate? It, it is the 3 channels of your image RGB. If you have a grayscale image, you will have just one channel. But since uh, all your images are colored, you will have 3 channels R, G and B. How do you do the convolution in this case? 
it uh, doesn't matter you do it in the same way as you would have done for any other layer for the convolution neural network it is just an input of matrices so you can imagine that the input itself has a depth of size 3 and then you do the regular convolutions and the output of this in the first stage you have a depth of 64 then next stage you drop the height and width to half that is 112 your depth increase to 128 then to 56 28 14 and finally to 7 and your depth is 256 here phi 12 and finally phi 12 this is the output of your all convolution and pooling layers and these are your fully connected layers again as in the electret they have 4096 4096 and finally 1000 and at the end, end of the network you have the softmax layer so this is how your typical simple convolutional neural networks will look like and this understanding should be sufficient for you to proceed and understand the object detection and uh, please don't consider this to be the complete course on CNNs or even uh, machine learning I have just given the enough basics so that you can understand rest of the topics related to object detection and since in this course main focus is on object detection I didn't cover the CNNs in depth if you are interested uh, and there are many helpful or useful tutorials I have uh, left some links in the description one last thing now how do we compare the convolution neural networks and the classical computer vision based techniques here we can see that the object detection pipeline or even the classification pipeline is somewhat similar these convolution and pooling layers actually they are acting as feature extractors in the classical computer vision based techniques we had feature extractors like hog sift etc but here this role the role of feature extraction is done by the convolution and pooling layers and uh, these layers the fully connected layers and softmax they are actually acting like uh, classification layers in the classical computer vision based techniques we used svm for classification but instead here we are using the fully connected and softmax layers so that's how you can compare these two different networks and as we already discussed these uh, feature extractors are called hand engineered feature extractors because you know the exact math behind it and you know you are aware of what kind of features they are trying to extract but when it comes to convolutional neural network since there are so many parameters involved and so many different layers that is for example if you are taking ResNet 50 architecture here it has 25 million parameters and it occupies almost 100 MB and it has 50 different layers and ResNet 152 has 152 layers because of the depth of the network sometimes it becomes very difficult to understand what exactly your network is trying to learn and uh, that is the reason why they say that the classical computer vision based technique are all hand engineered feature extractors